people, lazy and evil For years I've watched y'all allow Donald Trump turn you to crazy people Where's that freedom ego when you Welcome to 3 Count Commentary So let's talk about Rampage from January the 7th, 2022 Alright, so there's some, some news coming out of this Rampage show So I'm going to take my time and go through it uh, Jake Atlas was defeated by Adam Cole, baby. They actually had a pretty good match. Um, Jake Atlas is... I was not a fan of the silly fake fighting shit they did at the start where, you know, they were, you know, uh, I I throw a punch, you block it. I, I throw a kick, you duck it. You know, we roll and we both do a kip up or we both fake like we're going to do super kicks. It was like, okay, this is not what wrestling is supposed to be. All right. Uh, I know you watched the Jerry Lynn Rob Van Dam match. I know you watched Ricochet and Real Ospreay, but that's not what wrestling is, dog. Please stop doing this. You know, please stop with the I throw a punch, you duck. You you throw a super kick, I duck it, and I roll out of the way. And then we do a double drop kick, or we do then we do a double kip up, and then we stare at one another, and then we wait for the audience to clap. It's like no, that is not what wrestling is. Stop doing it. And then also. It's not just that they're doing it and it's terrible. It's also they're doing it and it's lazy. They don't even put forth the full effort. Like when you watch Jerry Lynn and Rob Van Dam do that stuff, they were literally look like they were trying to hit some of those moves. You know, like um, like Rob Van Dam did like a a spinning. I'm about to say spinning a flipping senton or something, um, or a flipping leg drop. And Jerry Lynn was gone when he got there. You know, it's like he was really trying to hit that move. It wasn't a, you know, I, I'm going through the motions kind of thing, which is how everybody does it now. And it's awful. Uh, Adam Cole did a tuning up the band in the corner, you know, an homage to Shawn Michaels. Uh, Jake Atlas pulled out some cool moves, like his suplex driver, which I thought was very interesting. Um, of course, later in the match, uh, Jake Atlas collapsed. He couldn't finish the match. So Adam Cole put him in a knee bar in order to finish it. Um, Jake Atlas just submitted. Um, then they were going to jump him. Uh, Cole and Red Dragon was going to jump him. Um, then the best friends came out and ran him off. I'm like, okay, so they're not done with best friends. For Christ's sake, they're not done. This was also bad booking because why are we beating Jake Atlas already? Jake Atlas should be in a match he can win. Um, he been he was doing all of the flippity doo and... Um, top rope missile drop kicks and springboard such and such is and it was only it was inevitable that he was going to blow his knee out and i hope he feels okay because i know he again he was a guy who had mental health problems and sometimes when you get injured that stuff kind of flares back up especially if you can't go anymore because this is a time where jake atlas was getting a lot of love and a lot of attention because you know um he he is a part of the crew that these people like and he was from that area that people like the Southern California wrestling area, you know, the PWG guys. And, um, he's one of their guys. So they were obviously going to give him a higher profile and give him more opportunities than they would have given to pretty much anyone else. He's sort of the gay guy that they wanted. And they ended up with Sonny kiss. But, um, it's like when, uh, John Lord hired the wrong one legged guy. Tony Khan hired the wrong gay dude. In, in, in any event, um, it sucks that he got hurt. And sometimes injuries, you know, affect your mental health. And he just came back from like a mental health induced retirement where he just couldn't do it anymore. He just didn't feel like wrestling was in his, you know, in him anymore. So it's really sad that, you know, in one of his few matches back, he got hurt. And it was a very high profile match too. It's really sad. I hope he's okay. And, you know, um, hopefully he, he, he can push back and push through this thing, you know, and he doesn't let this hold him down, you know, because uh, mental health is some serious shit. And uh, injuries definitely um, play a role into that. All right. So the next thing we got is Cody is out of the TNT title match at Battle of the Belts. And therefore, Dustin will step in and they're going to have an interim TNT championship match. So um, they're basically telegraphing this and telling you that Sammy Guevara is going to beat Dustin Rhodes and become the interim TNT champion. Now, the interim thing 
is very controversial among some people. Some people don't like the interim concept. They think we should just, you know, get rid of the match. I saw cage side seats. I saw some other blue check marks say the interim interim titles are stupid. Um, so they don't want to, they don't have an opinion on the, uh, some people don't understand what an interim championship is. And it's basically being a stopgap champion. You're basically an asterisk champion. You know, in boxing, how it works is if a guy gets stripped, if a guy can't perform, just like in this situation, you will have somebody else fill in as champion for a little while. And then ultimately that guy will wrestle the last guy, the lineal champion. That's what you would call him. The lineal champion is the guy who beat the champion. The interim champion won the title because the champion was indisposed. So, so in UFC, sometimes the guy would be suspended and then you have to have an interim champion. A guy would, um, I think one time it was a contractual thing where a guy just didn't want to fight and therefore they had an uh, interim champion. And the interim champion, it's his destiny to fight the lineal champion. So the concept of Sammy Guevara versus Cody for the actual unified TNT title, the official TNT championship is, is, uh, is going to happen. So telling me that this is going to be an interim championship, I was kind of like, hmm, I understand that they kind of, this is one of those things that is in sports. Again, UFC has interim champions. Boxing has interim champions. It's not, it's one of those silly, small sports things that Tony Khan wants to throw in there. And I'm okay with it. You know, it is a little bit better than uh, just canceling the match. Uh, you know, whole cloth like uh, Roman and um, Brock, and they just canceled the match and said, "Oh, we'll come, we'll get to it when we get to it." You know, um, they basically saying, "Look, somebody's got to have this belt. You know, somebody's got to be this champion. This title cannot be vacant for a long period of time." You know, and usually that's what you would do if the champion is indisposed. You would just make the title vacant. That's what New Japan does. If you were sick or tired or you can't make the trip or whatever. They would just vacate the belt and then, you know, you'll have to come back and try to win it again. <laughs> you know, that's a little bit more brutal than even the interim championship concept. But I think it kind of leads to a Cody, Sammy Guevara, probably a ladder match that they're going to do. Because they like to have all these nods to, you know, um, mainstream sports and also to old pro wrestling. It's, uh, it seemed like it, it fell right into their lap that Cody probably got COVID or something like that. And so now... Sammy Guevara is going to defeat Dustin Rhodes, and then we're going to have a ladder match to unify the both belts, you know, um, which probably will be won by Cody, if we're being honest. So uh, later, um, Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page were very upset about this. Um, Lambert was upset about the interim championship. Think Scorpio Sky, who hasn't been beaten in 300 days, should be in this match or that Ethan Page should be in this match. And that it's unfair that it's Dustin and that, you know, picking Dustin is the reason, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's an example rather that, uh, the Rhodes family is kissing up to Tony Khan and he favors them and all that kind of stuff. And I say Scorpio Sky hasn't won a match in 300 days, lost a match in 300 days. Cause he probably hasn't had a fucking match in 300 days. You know, I, I don't know if I've seen a Scorpio Sky singles match within the last eight months. I don't, I don't know. I couldn't tell you, you know, if it was, it was probably on dark or a dark elevation. And I don't watch that shit. It is a very curious decision to have to give the heels a good point. Why was Dustin chosen? You know, it seemed like a per- if Dustin's just going to lose anyway. Then why was Dustin chosen? Why not put Ethan Page in that spot? Why not put Scorpio Sky in that spot? And at least tease the idea that somebody fresh or somebody new could be the TNT champion. We know Dustin's not going to win. You know, we, we just know that. You know, that's not his job. His spot is not to be the a champion in this company. He may end up being a tag champion with Cody one day, but that's winning singles titles is not likely. You know, he's but so I'm kind of. I'm on the fence of the heels at this point. You know, I'm on their side of the fence, I should say. You know, they had a good point. You know, you're sucking up. How is your brother getting title shots? That didn't make any sense, you know. And um, Scorpio Sky should be the number one contender. Well, I guess so. So Andrade continues to not understand friendships. Similar to his conversation with Death Triangle, he doesn't understand that Darby Allen, who he calls the little boy. Um, I- I'm sorry, my bad. Andrade, look at me, look at me, I'm Andrade El Idolo. Um, he doesn't understand friendships. 
So he thinks that the little boy, a.k.a. Darby Allen, works for Sting. He doesn't understand why the little boy works for Sting. Tony Schiavone has to tell him the little boy, I mean, Darby Allen doesn't work for Sting. They're friends. And then Andrade says, how do you know? <laughs> Which is probably the funniest shit. <laughs> how do you know they're friends? <laughs> what have you seen? <laughs> you got evidence of this friendship? Uh, <laughs> that was great. Um, so he claims that he's going to, uh, he's going to show them, um, something or other. I don't know. I was too busy laughing at, you know, the fact that he, he, he don't understand friendships. He continues to not understand it. He thinks every relationship is somebody's the boss. And, you know, that's an interesting angle for the character. You know, somebody's got to be in control here. He doesn't have any friends. He only has underlings. He's like the great Jackie at this point. No friends, only underlings. Uh, so Andrade is going to fight Darby Allen. I'm cool with that idea. Uh, I like this promo. I like that Andrade doesn't understand friendships. He doesn't have human emotions. He doesn't have friends. He has underlings. So that was cool. Um, I also did not mind Hook versus Aaron Solo. Uh, Hook karate chopped this guy in the side of the head, which is probably the craziest thing I've seen in a wrestling match in quite a while. Uh, I, all the barbed wire, baseball bats, all the 150 street fights people do, I was definitely taken more aback by a guy just randomly chopping another guy. I was like, what in the world? Why would you chop him in the head like this? You know, it's like a straight karate chop, like you would have seen out of like one of them old kung fu movies. I'm like, holy shit. So, um, Hook got his shit in, you know, suplexed him. He looked smooth as usual. He looked good. Um, he took more offense here than he'd ever taken before. At least I don't, at least I think so. He sold a little bit more than he ever did, but you know, he wasn't selling a lot, you know, cause mostly part of his character is that he's cool, quote unquote, which means he has to try to be cool, quote unquote, which means that he doesn't sell for too long, you know, which I find very strange that he was selling punches and kicks from Aaron Solo, but he couldn't sell a power driver. You know, like that was from a guy twice his size. Which is very weird because when you look at people who don't sell, they usually don't sell the punches and kicks of these guys either. <laughs> you know, like, like the road warriors will often not sell punches and kicks or power drivers or suplexes. You know, it's like we're big and strong and muscular. We don't sell anything. You know, you drop kick us. We don't leave our feet. We stumble into the ropes or whatever, you know, but now Aaron Solo, who is a shade bigger than he is. Um, was giving him the blues. I thought that was very weird. Um, we got the finish with the, was red rum, of course, by submission. Hook looked good as usual. Uh, Aaron Solo, um, uh, he was okay. He wasn't that bad. He needs to get in the gym. You know, uh, he, he definitely needs to get in the gym. QT Marshall, who also needs to be in the gym, got in uh, Hook's face after this match. The storyline is that QT Marshall, of course, is more responsible for Hook's training than even Taz is. So he feels disrespected by Hook. And um, he kind of, Hook tried to walk away from him at first. Then he continued berating him and then he suplexed him. I'm like, okay, cool. Whatever. They're trying to get Hook over big here. The crowd's chanting, we are hookers. They got a Hook section with the little cue cards, which, you know, no doubt AEW gave away, just like WWE used to give away the Cesaro section cards. No doubt AEW created those whole hook section stuff. And this whole thing is astroturf as fuck. I don't care what anybody tells you. Hook may be good, but a lot of the, um, there is no grassroots push for hook. It's all astroturf. It's all a bunch of people online trying to meme hook into existence. And whenever people do that, it almost always falls apart. You know, it, he, it turns them into a flash in the pan. And that's not what you want, you know. But I like Hook. He's, he's doing a good job here. Uh, Ricky Starks came out there and unveiled to the world that he will actually be defending his FTW championship at Battle of the Belts. He's going to be fighting Matt Seidel. And said that he chose Matt Seidel as his opponent because... Of Dante Martin. It took Dante Martin three chances to beat Matt Seidel. And he's not going to show him. It only took him once. 
And I was like, look, at least Ricky Starks is going to be on TV. I want them to burn the FTW belt with fire. Um, but at least Ricky Starks will be on TV. At least. My God, finally he will be on TV. Uh, the next match, Ruby Soho and Riho versus Britt Baker and Jamie Hayter. Riho and Ruby Soho were one as Riho rose up um, Jamie Hayter. They teased some more dissension between Baker and Hayter after the match with Baker storming off and not wanting to talk to Hayter after she lost. I don't care about that. Uh, the, the main event, Eddie Kingston and Proud and Powerful, a.k.a. Santana and Ortiz, Defeat 2.0 and Danny Garcia as Santana and Ortiz finally win a fucking match. It only took them a two years in order to actually do it. Um, 2.0 claims to have Eddie Kingston's number. The fight started backstage. It was another street fight. I was not fucking interested. I'm tired of street fights. I'm tired of seeing people get hit with chairs and garbage cans and all kinds of shit. I'm tired of street fights. So I really did not pay that much attention to this. After the match, um, Danny Garcia and 2.0 continued the beating because of course they do. Nothing ever fucking ends on this show. And Jericho ran down to the ring to make the stave. All right, fine. Who cares? We know he's out there to help his uh, inner city boys. Inner circle boys, inner city. <laughs> they might as well be his his inner city youth. Some uh, some latchkey kids he's taking, uh, taking care of. I mean, they act like it. Uh, so this rampage, if this ma if this show had been typical three matches, I think it would have been a good show because uh, Jake Atlas versus Adam Cole wasn't bad. Hook versus Aaron Solo wasn't bad. But the rest of this shit, um, as far as the, the tag team matches, oh man, I could have did without that shit. Really could have did without it. Um, and that kind of makes this show a fairly even meh for me. I like the first two matches. I like Hook and Aaron Solo. I thought that was fine. Um, good showcase for Hook. And I think Jake Atlas did a really good job against Adam Cole um, until the until his injury, of course. Because once the match turned to shit after that, but, you know, he was already hurt. Um, but other than that, this show was typical AEW horse shit, you know. People jumping all over the place and weapons. I'm surprised that nobody bled. You know, maybe I wasn't paying attention close enough. Maybe somebody did bleed, you know, in bad promos. Very, very bad promos. So uh, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Like, share, subscribe. I'll talk to you guys later, man. Peace out.